All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to Forgotten Coast Fishing. We're going offshore in the Grady today. We've got a little bit of storms to kind of watch out for, but the future radar looks pretty good. The species we're going to be looking for is red snapper. That's in season right now. And uh, we'll be looking for some vermilion, mangroves, maybe even try to pick up some king. So we'll just get out there and see what we can catch. And if you'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Of course, if you've already subscribed, I greatly appreciate you. And we'll see you out there. Alright y'all, so change of plans. We've got a number of nasty looking storms. That's pretty much where we wanted to go for our reef this morning. But what we're going to do in the meantime while we wait on those to pass is we're going to troll for some king mackerel. Right out here you probably have, I don't know, maybe 75 individual reefs in this reef area. So I'm going to rig up some king mackerel rigs. Um, the first one I'm going to use is this uh, Rapala X-Wrap. Um, this will also pull up a big Spanish mackerel too if they're they're out there. And then also we're going to butterfly a cigar minnow and put out on a stinger rig. So how I like to, to butterfly these um, cigar minnows to put them out is you're just going to kind of fillet them backwards a little bit. Just kind of go along the, the backbone as if you're filleting a fish. Turn it over. Do the same thing on the other side. About halfway up or so, and you can pull that out. That'll be a little chum. Now that'll just kind of give it a little more scent, um, and that tail won't um, tend to make it spin. All right, we got one again, y'all. It's got a little more weight to it. Now sometimes these Spanish mackerel, their mouths will tear. You know, if you're pulling it in too hard with the boat moving, sometimes heavier gear. I think it's a king, it's not pulling that hard. But I can see some color, he's got, definitely got a better size to him. Another good Spanish. All right, this is on that X-Wrap. This X-Wrap is pretty deadly with these Spanish mackerel. That's why I wanted to put that out, just in case there's some Spanish out here we could get. Spanish will sure bloody up your boat. What happens is those hooks get in the gills. That's a nice Spanish. Let's see. He's about almost 20 inches. All right, we picked up something. It's just like he's swimming to me. I mean, definitely it's got some weight to him. Another nice Spanish, y'all. Another nice Spanish. No, nope, this is a baby king, y'all. Yep. This is a little baby king. Alright, let's get him off. Alright, so this was a little baby king mackerel. He's too small, so I've got to let him go. But before I want to let him before I can let him go, I want to show you little little ways how you can tell. Now this is a Spanish up here. You can see that the spots on the Spanish are a little more yellow these are not quite as a dark yellow but also you can tell by this first dorsal fin it's mostly white and, and kind of gray on this spanish you're going to have more of a black see how much more black that is so that's how you can tell because obviously they look a lot alike when the king mackerel are smaller so let's go ahead and get him back there he goes all right well that was kind of cool we got our king mackerel so let's uh, hopefully we can kind of get a bigger one. That was good to, to find the king mackerel, but we need one that's at least 24 inches. All right, so we since we got that king mackerel. I'm gonna, that's kind of what I'd like to really target. I mean, those Spanish are nice and everything, but I'm gonna switch up. I'm still gonna use the same um, skirt stinger rig on that side, but I'm gonna switch away from this Rapala X-Wrap and go to this um, sort of sinking skirted rig. And it's got uh, three different hooks on it. So the first one is gonna go like we're hooking them all up through that hard part of the head. 
and then I'm just going to kind of hook this second one or the third one I'm sorry back in the back kind of keep that from spinning so much actually I'll go ahead and bury this second one too there we go all right we got them y'all this is on that sinking one Decent weight to them. Let's see what we got here, y'all. Yep, the king. All right, y'all. Yep, I think this is gonna be a keeper king, y'all. So he's got to be 24. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah, he's 27. So check out this king mackerel, y'all. It's my first one of the season. He's not a monster, but these are good. You know, this is a good size for eating and smoking. Um, you know, the bigger ones can have a good bit of mercury in them as they get bigger. What we like to do is make smoked fish dip out of them. All right, well, let's get him in the box. I think he got me. He got me on the leg. When he was thrashing about, I think his teeth got me. You've got one of these sprayers. They make things really nice. When you catch those Spanish or King mackerel, or even when you're cleaning or cutting squid, but if you kind of keep your boat clean, get this blood off while it's fresh, it's a lot easier to clean later on in the afternoon. These washdowns are really nice. This is just salt water out from the ocean there. All right, y'all. Got them again on the sinker one. Oh, he's a bigger one. Let's see if we can get him out of this rod or get him out of this other setup. Hopefully he's not tangled. I think he did get tangled. Yeah, I'm seeing we're kind of tangled a little bit. He's got a little bit of weight to him, y'all. I don't think he's... Oh. I think that one either got off. I don't know what's going on, y'all. All right, well, we got a bigger on this one. I guess that one got off. That was strange, but we've got a bigger on, bigger one on this one. Definitely, definitely a bigger one. Guess we kind of traded fish. All right, y'all. There's a bigger one. Bigger king. Got a good king mackerel here, y'all. Oh, we spit the hook right there. Didn't have to deal with the pliers. Let's see what he looks like. He's about a little over 29 or so. So we're gonna go ahead and get him in the box. We can keep three, we can get one more. I showed you how to bleed the Spanish, but I do the same thing with the with the kings. And this one bled out a lot anyway with his gills getting fouled up with the hooks here we go y'all all right oh here's the big one they are getting bigger they are getting bigger they are getting bigger oh, we gotta slow them down dang y'all we gotta slow them down I'm trying to keep this fish on fight him keep the boat somewhat going straight so I can keep keep this fish out of that other line over there obviously if we had somebody with us we'd get them to reel that in but we're managing it's just barely an idle just enough to move forward a little bit so that other line doesn't kind of back up into us all right so he made that a nice initial run tightened up my drag some now I'm making some headway i expect once he gets a little closer we're gonna get another run here but both of these rigs that i had set up were the surface um, stinger rigs with the little skirts on them the weighted one i had i lost earlier so i've kind of caught them on both the weighted one and the ones on the surface there he goes he's kind of i felt something pop I know he's still on there but sometimes one hook 
may kind of pop and we only got one left in him. I think he's still on. Now he's just swimming at me. All right. I think we may have to gaff this one, y'all. Let's see if we can get see some color up here. Oh, uh, yeah. They get bigger each time, y'all. Let's go and gaff it. Yeah. We wound up good getting it tangled up. All right, y'all. We got him. The king mackerel get bigger every time. Nice king mackerel. Let's get a good picture of him. All right, the storms have passed, so we've moved out to our artificial reefs out here. We're close to 30 miles out, sitting in about 120 feet of water. All right, I was losing a lot of squid with those bigger hooks, so I switched to uh, four alt circle hooks. And this is a 40 pound leader, so it's a little lighter setup, smaller hooks. So we'll see if, you know, just whatever's getting my bait off is just not smaller fish. And hopefully these smaller circle hooks will, will grab them and we can kind of see what's going on down there. Oh, I think I got him. All right, got him, got him, got him. We'll see what he is. Yeah, he's still on. Perhaps it's a vermilion. I'm not sure. He's not pulling that hard. Not making any runs or anything, obviously. Oh, this is a Tom Tate. Often called Ruby Red Lips, and I'll show you why. Look at their mouth. So this is this is going to go in our live well. This is going to be good for a big snapper. We'll put him on in a few minutes. All right, we're not really catching anything other than these Tom Tates, so I'm, I think we're about to go. But before we go, since I got these Tom Tates, I'm going to go ahead and hook this on our my bigger rod and reel over here. And what this is, this is a seven aught circle hook with 80 pound leader, and that's going to go up to a swivel, and then an, a six ounce sinker and then 60 pound leader or mono and then that's tied to my main line a standard carolina rig so the idea is to get this to the bottom let this swim around so i'm going to hook this kind of through the nose kind of go in one side and out the other like that anything down there big enough to get it it'll get hooked oh man Right off the bat. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Hope I'm not in a reef. Oh, let's try to get him out. Oh, man. Feels like a grouper getting down in that reef. Oh, one of these things where you just get stuck. Oh, let's see. Feel like he's moving. Boy, it just feels like you're stuck on the bottom and it very well may be but if sometimes you catch a grouper and they'll just go back in that hole and you can eventually kind of get them out so there's two ways to do this one is to kind of hang on like this and tire them out and hope he can kind of get pulled out of the hole that's what I'm gonna try first. That's worked for me before. Or, if that doesn't work, you can give it some slack and, you know, kind of let him swim. And if he's just kind of in a hole kind of thing, he may come right back out. And then you can start reeling. Oh, it broke. Let's see what we've got left here. Yeah, this got, everything the, the the top shot the leader this is all frayed yeah whatever it was you can see the fray there was in the reef all right let's re-rig and get another tom tate out there here we go drop number two this time i'm gonna be ready 
So the idea is once you get that fish, just reel as fast and furious as you can. Hopefully you can keep him from diving back into that reef. I think I've got him out of the reef, y'all. I think I've got him out of the reef. All right. Yes. Oh, but don't stop. Oh, man. Yeah, he's out of the reef. I just got to keep him up. Oh, if he doesn't get back down. Oh, man, he got off. Broke the line. Man, I thought I had him. All right. Try to rethink our rig here because it's breaking the main line. I thought I had him out of the reef though. All right, so what I'm going to do now, this is 40 pound mono main. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a 10 or so feet of 80 pound leader, then put my sinker on that, then my swivel, and then my 80 pound leader with my seven aught hook. And maybe that'll give me enough distance if he does nick that reef. You know, there's an, it won't be hitting the main line. Let's get all that rigged up. All right, I've got that all rigged up. Even pulled out the fighting belt. And it's gonna take everything I've got to get that up. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, did I get him out? Did I get him out? I think so. Oh, I think I got him out. Oh, come on. Yeah, he's up. I don't see him yet. Oh, if I can just make some headway and get him up. Oh, no. Is he getting away from me? Uh, 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 we going around? Uh, it's just a big fish, y'all. I think he's out of the reef. Uh, uh, if I can just tire him out before he tires me out. Uh, Oh, it broke again. Man. Y'all. That's tiring. Holy cow. I thought I had him out. Man, that's tiring because it takes everything you have. To pull up the fish for one thing plus reeling as fast as you can so let me catch my breath get another leader and hook tied on there get some of these rods out of the way because that was causing some problems and we'll try it again only got one more tom tate but let's see if the last one is the charm Again. Oh. Come on, come on. Oh, I feel like I'm maybe doing it, y'all. Oh. Maybe. If I could just keep all this pressure on him. Oh. oh, no. Ah. No, 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 don't go. Don't go down. Don't go down. Oh, I can't stop him, y'all. I feel like he's moving up, though. Oh, man. Excuse the non narration. I think he's tiring out, just like me. 
<sighs> Y'all think I'm getting them up. I see them. I see them. Then to my top shot. That's a nice amberjack. I can't keep them. It's not amberjack season. Look at this guy, y'all. That's what was getting us. See if I can get him up by the tail. I don't think he fit in my net. Oh, I got him up, y'all. Whoa, that's a big amberjack. Now we know what we were fighting. Unfortunately, it's not amberjack season. Look at this hook, y'all. Right in the corner of the mouth there. They don't call these reef donkeys for nothing. Y'all, look at them. All right, let's get a measure. He's about 36 inches. All right, let's go, dude. There he goes. All right, y'all, starting to get windy. It's three o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Get the boat cleaned up and we'll see you back at the house. All right, now this is the smallest king mackerel that we have spanish mackerel and king mackerel you know are basically the same fish just the king mackerel obviously bigger now what i'm going to do i'm going to actually clean this king mackerel the same way i cleaned the spanish mackerel the bigger ones i'm going to have to make cuts along the back and along the stomach um, to make it clean and a little easier but i think this guy is not too big to go ahead and clean with one slice like that so what i do first off i kind of feel where this head ends and it's about right there because there is some meat up there and there again make your your cut now with these bigger ones i'm going to go ahead and at least cut that part it helps me get kind of my knife started in this direction now there again these fish don't have big thick rib bones like some other offshore fish so you're able to do this and then just sort of clean off that rib cavity meat and then just flip them over and do the exact same thing. We're gonna leave our skin on and it works better to leave the skin on when you smoke them. All right, now here's the big king mackerel. So we're gonna do this a little bit differently. First off, you're gonna take the same step. Go ahead and make that first initial cut down. And what I do for the next step, I go ahead and get my knife just at the top left part of that fish so you're cutting on the top fillet side and you're just going to be making a slip just to puncture that skin basically to make sort of an outline is the way I think of it of what you're going to end up filleting off for some reason it works better when you go backwards like this like it feels like you're pushing your knife backwards as opposed to this would seem more of a natural motion I don't know why, but going like this, it just seems to cut smoother. Up under here, you're gonna see these, um, you know, these backbone bones that come off the backbone, I should say. And so you're just gonna kind of follow that alone, just having your knife rake just across those top of those bones. Now, once you get to the backbone, then go ahead and flip it over. Now we already cut to here, but this is just all his, you know, stomach and, you know, innards in this part. Go ahead and make a good cut though. But once you get here, you know, then you're gonna wanna do the same sort of cut. There again, we're just outlining what we're gonna wind up cutting off. Now I go ahead and make a cut there because that's kind of where you're gonna start your cut. Then go ahead and do the same thing. Just follow the top of those bones, cutting to the backbone. So you're just kind of removing this from the fish and from the bones. All right, now once you've done that, then you can take your knife in here, get along to the backbone. See, now that's, that's where these scores that we did is important because your knife's just gonna kind of follow that and just kind of finish that last little bit of flesh cut in the middle. It comes off nice and easily like that. 
All right, so same sort of step, just a bigger fish. You need to get all these rib bones and this kind of rib lining out. Sometimes if you get some of these bones that kind of attach to the fins, you can kind of score those out. And that's essentially it. Now there are some bones right here, um, but we're gonna be smoking these and then you know, sort of shredding it from there. So these are pretty big bones. We're, you'll be able to fill those and get those out. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is just kind of, since this is so big, just kind of cut this in manageable sized smoking pieces. And that way, um, you know, it'll all fit on your smoker instead of one big um, fillet. Plus it'll cook a little better in smaller pieces, a little more evenly. And our first step in smoking this fish to make our smoked fish dip is we're gonna make a brine. And in this bowl, I've already put really the two ingredients and that's a quarter cup salt and a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then we're just gonna add four cups to that, two cups that's kind of warm. And I'm gonna put that in first just to kind of help mix this salt and brown sugar a little easier than, than cold water. And then once that's mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and add the other two cups of cold water. And that'll just, just keep you from having to put fish into warm water. You'd rather keep it as cold as possible. So then the next step is just to put your fish in. So we decided just to do three pieces for now. That's gonna be more than enough for our fish dip. All right, and there you go. And I'm just gonna put this lid on it and I'm gonna go put this in the refrigerator and then start to get our smoker ready. All right, so this is the smoker we're gonna be using. This is just a basic bullet type smoker. It's a, it's a, I've had this for I don't know how many years. But anyway, it's just a simple sort of deal. I don't know if you can see, but at the bottom, you're just gonna put the charcoal. And then next, I'm gonna put some water in this tray and then just your fish on top. And then you got your lid right here. So then it has this door here. You can kind of add charcoal and add um, wood chips as needed. And the type of wood we're gonna use for our smoking is apple wood. And, and that's kind of good for your fish because it's, it's not a heavy, heavy smoke. But what you wanna do first is go ahead and get how much you think you're gonna need and just go ahead and get them soaking in some water. And so what that's gonna do is that water's gonna kinda soak into this wood and it's just gonna keep it from burning so fast and it'll create some good smoke. Let's go ahead and get our charcoal in there and get it going. That fish only needs to sit in the brine really, you know, about the amount of time that you get your smoker ready. It's gonna take me 30, 45 minutes um, to get it set up, to get the charcoal hot, get the wood in there and all that kind of stuff. And that was a good bit of salt in that brine, so it's gonna brine a little faster. All right, so let's go ahead and get our charcoal in there and get it going. All right, so we've got our coals almost ashed over. So we're gonna go ahead and start to assemble everything. So our first step, since we've got access to the coals, we're gonna go ahead and put up some of our wood chips in. Now just kind of shake off the excess. So I'm gonna start out with that. That's five pieces. And we'll see how that starts to smoke. We can always open that door right there and add some more. And we'll probably have to do that periodically anyway. So now let's go ahead and get our water in here. And we can get our grate for the fish. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our fish on now. What we're gonna do first is go ahead and rinse them off a little bit and then dry them and then get them on. So I'm just gonna take our hose over here and then just sort of pat them dry. And what we're gonna do is put them skin side down. Can you hear my thermometer? It's a little hot. I'm, I've got it set to, to monitor the grill. That's what this thermometer is, just to kind of monitor the air temperature in there. Right now it's 229. I'm trying to aim for 175 to 200, but you know, this is gonna cool down as the, as the charcoal starts to, to kind of burn away. So I think that'll be okay. 
go ahead and put our lid on so all that nice smoke stays in there. And we'll just kind of monitor our temperature and make sure it starts going down. And, uh, you know, if we see the smoke starting to diminish a little bit, we could add some um, more wood chips to that if we wanted to. But this is probably going to take, I don't know, somewhere two to three to three and a half hours maybe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back with some cooked fish. All right, y'all. We got our fish all smoked. It looks beautiful. Look at that nice golden brown. You can tell that smoke really penetrated that fish. That's going to be really good. So it took about two hours. Um, the heat was a little hotter, so it cooked a little faster. But what I did is I used this internal um, meat thermometer, which is a very valuable piece of equipment if you don't have one. Um, this is a Javelin Pro um, by Lava Tools. It's a, it's a good product. We use this all the time. But anyway, I used that to check the fish, and once it got it to 160 degrees, um, then we knew it was done. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get our fish off, put some tin foil over it, and then we're going to use our ingredients over here and kind of get our fish dip um, put together. This actually is a recipe from a good buddy of mine, Scott, who's a chef at a seafood restaurant, and this is the fish dip that they make in their restaurant. So he gave that to me several years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. And I'll leave this recipe down in the description below. All right, so our first step is we have two eight ounce packages of cream cheese that I've softened. So I kind of just let them sit out here with me for the past 30 minutes or so um, and let them kind of get softened up because we're going to want to stir those and beat it up. And so it's a lot easier when they're softened. And the next is eight ounces of sour cream. And I softened this as well. All right, then our next ingredient is some lemon juice. If you have some fresh lemons or want to go out and buy some fresh lemons, you certainly could. But what we're going to do is we're going to do two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then horseradish. And you want to make sure you get kind of the pure horseradish as opposed to that horseradish type sauce. We're going to do two tablespoons of this as well. Next ingredient is some hot sauce. We're going to do a tablespoon of that. This is sriracha. You can use any type of hot sauce. Next ingredient, this is um, some finely diced green onions. This is a quarter of a cup. And then we're going to add a quarter cup of green peppers, finely diced. Next, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. Now I have this stuff in our pantry. This is smoked sea salt. Um, it's got a, a real strong smoke taste. I'm tempted to put that in there, but I wanna taste the um, fish in there first. If it's not salty enough, and if we don't feel like we have enough smoke on that fish, we could add this because this actually has a really nice uh, smoked flavor. Then a teaspoon or so of black pepper, I'm just gonna do a several turns out of this pepper mill. And there again, we're gonna taste it and we can add later on if we want to. Then we're gonna add a teaspoon of minced garlic. There again, if you wanna use some fresh garlic, more than welcome to do that, but we find this jar um, garlic to be so much easier to deal with. And finally for this part, we're gonna do a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Now this is a quarter cup measuring cup, so I'm gonna do two of those to make our half cup. All right, and we're just gonna stir that up. This is why you wanna make sure you get your cream cheese softened. If you'd rather not stir so much or if you forgot to get your cream cheese softened, you could certainly put this in a mixer and uh, do it that way. This is just gonna require a little more stirring on my part. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and shred this fish and get it in there. Now, as you remember, when we cleaned this fish, we didn't cut out any bloodline. And you see all this brown type meat right here. That's what the bloodline looks like when it's cooked. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does kind of have like an off, sort of a fishy taste. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, as, you know, as we're kind of 
shredding this up, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out before we shred it up just to get that out of there since we can. First off, I'm going to kind of feel for any bones. First off, let's taste this. Wow. Wow, that is good fish, y'all. That is really good fish. You know, a lot of people won't keep king mackerel. Their flesh is kind of mushy, especially if you don't take care to keep it real cold or if you clean it the next day, which is what I did. I kind of got back late last night, so I chose to clean my fish today. I could tell the flesh was a little mushy when I was cleaning it, but I kept it packed on ice um, overnight pretty pretty well and pretty cold. So it really wasn't that bad, but you can kind of tell a difference. We like to do this fish, smoked fish dip with it. Now I have grilled it before and it's just been fine. It's, it's kind of an oily fish, so it's, it's never really going to get really firm when you cook it. But there's nothing wrong with the taste. It's just the texture is a little bit different. All right, well, let's mix this up. I think that may be enough fish. Can't really overdo it. It's just, you know, kind of once it starts to look like fish dip, you can start to see the, the fish in it. You could put a little or as much as you want. All right, I am gonna put a little bit of smoked salt in there. It still does need that salt, and I think we could have a little more of that smoked flavor. It looks like pepper going out there because, you know, it's got that it's smoky color in the salt. Let's give that a stir and see where we are. Now let's give this a taste. That's it. When you can taste a little bit of that hot sauce, a little horseradish, you know, you got the green onions, got the green peppers. When, er when everything's balanced, that's where you know you're done. Then you got that smoke flavor, especially it kind of hits you at the end. So that is the excellent smoked mackerel fish dip. Thanks to my buddy, Scott. All right, now we're gonna try this properly with good old Ritz crackers. That's excellent, y'all. The balance is there. Even the butter and the salt on these Ritz crackers adds to it. This is one of those things you set out with a group of people. This whole bowl will be gone in a matter of minutes. People are not going to be able to keep their hands out of this stuff. It's excellent. I'm going to take another bite. You got to make this. In the hot summer months down here in Florida, this is when king mackerel are they're most plentiful and they're real easy to catch. As you saw, we just used some, some frozen cigar minnows on those duster rigs with the stinger rig um, hooks. And I didn't do that, but maybe an hour or so and we got those three king mackerels and we could have stayed there and caught some more. I just chose to go offshore searching for those snappers. So they're real easy to catch this time of year. Get out there and catch you one. Try this smoked uh, fish dip, and I know you'll be pleased. If you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And if you have, I certainly appreciate you. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.